Hi everyone, let's talk about decay series. A decay series is when you start with a, radio a radioactive isotope and it decays to another radioactive isotope. And that decays to another radioactive isotope, which decays to another radioactive isotope. And it decays and decays and decays, 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 decays till finally it ends at a stable non-radioactive isotope, which is always going to be lead. Now we have four types of decay series. Uh, we have a uranium-238 decay, um, a uranium-235, remember that's our special uranium that we can make nuclear bombs from, um, uranium, excuse me, thorium-232, and plutonium-241. These three are all naturally occurring. Plutonium, um, as you know, that's going to be something that's synthetic, something that was man-made. So this is a synthetic uh, decay series. Now these decay series, you can actually look up all four of those and it's very predictable how these radioactive isotopes decay, 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 decay. Now this one that I chose right here is the thorium, 232. Um, I want to point out something kind of interesting to you. The half-life of thorium is, this right here says 1.41 times 10 to the 10. That's 14 billion years old. Now to put that in perspective, we estimate that the universe is 10 to 20 billion years old. Um, so in the lifetime of the universe, half of all the thorium-232 has decayed. We have to go another lifetime, equivalent lifetime, for the rest of that to decay. Um, kind of, well, actually just for another 25% of it to decay to go through another half-life. Um, so I wanted to put that in perspective um, for you that thorium has a huge half-life. Now, how you interpret this? Um, you're always going to have, start with the first one and that will be your reactant. So we're going to have a thorium 232, its atomic number is 90, and then you'll see an alpha or a beta particle. That tells you how it decays. So this is how I'd read this. Thorium-232 undergoes, undergoes a alpha decay. So the alpha is going to be on the product, or, yes, excuse me, the product side. And then the product, it gives it to us, is this radium-228. Now, let's check it. You know how to balance nuclear reactions. Let's add, we've got 232 on the reactant side, four plus 228, 232. We've got 90 on the reactant side, two plus 88 is 90 on the product side. Now, two terms that you'll want to know. Uh, whatever's on the reactant side is called the parent isotope, and whatever is on the product side is called the daughter isotope. Oops, daughter isotope. Now, in the decay series, the daughter isotope will then become the parent isotope. So thorium decays produces this radium-228 by releasing the alpha particle. And now look at this. The radium is under, going to undergo a beta decay. So let's write that down. So now the radium becomes the parent isotope. Here's my radium-228. And it is going to undergo a beta decay. Remember, that's just our high-speed electron. Um, and that will produce an actinium 228 with, let's see here, 89. So again, let's check our nuclear equation. We've got 88 equals 89 minus one, 88, perfect. Um, and then 228 equals zero plus 228, that's 228. So the radium is now the parent isotope and the actinium becomes the daughter isotope. Um, this half-life is only 5.7 years. Whoa, that's not even a breath compared to um, 14 billion years. Um, and then the actinium, kind of interesting, its half-life is only 6.1 minutes, and it undergoes another beta decay. Then you can see alpha, 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 alpha. Notice that the alpha decay decreases the atomic number, but when you undergo a beta decay, it increases the atomic number. And that's why this goes up. Um, it's trying to show the atomic numbers so here's a 90 atomic number, 88, 89, goes back to thorium, but this time it's a 228 thorium, so um, up to atomic number 90, and then our alpha decays decrease the atomic numbers. Um, and then here there's a choice. When it hits bismuth, bismuth can either undergo an alpha decay or a beta decay, but notice it ends at, finally, that final um, daughter isotope is going to be a lead 208. And lead 
is very, very stable, non-radioactive, very stable. Um, and you'll find that all of these are going to end at lead because it's so stable. Stables, or excuse me, lead is what's called a magic number. We have a handful of those on the periodic table that are isotopes that are extremely stable. Uh, um, another reason why we can use lead as a guard against gamma radiation is because it's so stable um, and super dense. Uh, so there you have it, decay series. We have four special decay series, three naturally occurring, one synthetic, and now you know how to read, write, translate, create um, the parent isotope, daughter isotope with nuclear equations. Pretty cool. Good job. Have a great day. Thanks.